Hello, in this video I'm going to solve the following problem for you. This is question number 8 from this past paper. The functions f and g are defined as follows, where a and b are constants. f of x equals 1 plus 2a over x minus a for x greater than a g of x equals to bx minus 2 for x belonging to the set r real numbers. Part a. Given that f of 7 is 5 over 2 and g f of 5 equals 4, find the values of a and b. If done correctly, this brings 4 points for you. For the rest of this question, you should use the value of a which you found in part a. Part B. Find the domain of F inverse. If done correctly, this brings you one point. Part C. Find an expression for F inverse of X. If done correctly, this brings you three points. That would be a good idea if we pause the video at this point and you try to solve the problem yourself first. If you do your calculations correctly, the answers that you will get are as follows. For part A, you will see that A equals to 3, B equals to 3 halves. For part B, the domain of the function, the inverse function, is x greater than 1. And for part C, this is the rule for f inverse. 3 plus 6 over x minus 1. Okay, now let us solve the problem. In part A, I know that f of 7 is supposed to be 5 over 2. This piece of information is enough to find the exact value of the first constant A. What is the meaning of this? It means that when you plug 7 for x, the output of the function is supposed to be 5 over 2. Okay, so, so let us do that. So from f of 7 equals to 5 over 2, I understand that if I go to function f and replace x with 7, I will get, of course, this expression. The output or the answer to this is supposed to be 5 over 2, and this is extremely simple equation in A. I solve it and find A. For example, I move 1 to the other side, I will have 2a over 7 minus a left on the left side. And then if I move 1 to the other side, it becomes negative 1. Then I have 5 over 2 minus 1, which is 3 halves. Okay. And then I use the rule, the product of means is equal to the product of extremes. Yes, yeah? so 2 times 4a is supposed to be 3 times this expression. So... This means that 4a is equal to 3 times 7 is 21 minus 3 times a. And then I move 3a to the left. It becomes positive 3a. I have a 4a there. So in total, I will have 7a is equal to 21. And then when I divide everything by 7, a becomes simply 3 as is supposed to be. Okay. But what is the meaning of the next one? The meaning of the next one is that if f acts at 5 and then it, produce as, it produces an output and g applies on this output and then the answer is supposed to be 4. So this is the function composition. So we can say g after f. Okay, so what we can do, we can do it in two steps. We can first calculate f because the priority is with f. f is the first function supposed to be applied on 5. So if I ask you what is f of 5, the answer is simple because I just go to function f, replace x with 5, noting that a is equal to 3 as well. So this becomes 1 plus 2 times a, I already got a to be 3, so 2 times a becomes 6. And then I am supposed to replace x with 5 and a with 3. So the answer to this is 1 plus 3 
which is 4. Yes, so this means that f of 5 is 4. But now, uh, g of f of 5 equals to g acting on f of 5. But I just got f of 5 to be 4, so this is nothing except g of 4. But then what is the meaning of g of 4? It means that I go to the function g, replace x with 4. So then I will get 4b minus 2. But the answer is supposed to be 4. So this means that 4b minus 2 is 4. So 4b is 6. And then it means that b is equal to 6 over 4 or simply 3 over 2. And that is the answer we are supposed to reach it. Okay, but for finding the domain of inverse function, uh, I prefer to use this uh, rule, okay? So we know that the domain of the inverse function is equal to the range of the function itself. So I want to apply this rule to find the domain of my inverse function. Okay, in order to do that, uh, let me write my function here in its uh, full detail because now I know that a is equal to 3. So the function that I have is actually f of x equals to 1 plus 6 over x minus 3. But the domain is x greater than a. a is 3, so the domain is x greater than 3. So that is my function. But now if I want to find the range of this function, instead of f of x, I put y. I want to know all possible values of y. Okay, so this becomes 1 over 6x minus 3. So what I will do, I would say that y minus 1 is equal to 6 over x minus 3. So then this means that x minus 3 is equal to 6 over y minus 1. Okay, so my goal is to use this condition for the domain to know what is the limitation for the variable y. Okay, if x is greater than 3, then x minus 3 covers all possible real numbers greater than 0. Because if x is greater than 3, x minus 3 is greater than 0. And this fraction is supposed to be equal to x minus 3. So this means that this should be a fraction, uh, a positive fraction. Okay, so this means that 6 over y minus 1 should be positive. Okay, and then this means that y minus 1 should be positive. And then this means that y is greater than 1. So the range of this uh, function is the domain of the inverse function. But you know that when you want to write the domain, so if, let me write it in terms of intervals. So the range of the function f is the interval from 1 to infinity. So this means that the domain of f inverse is from 1 to infinity. And because this is the domain, you can simply write x greater than 1. So that is the domain of this function. Okay, and now let me just use this part of the paper to find the f inverse, because the most part of the f inverse is actually done here. So in order to find the f inverse, what I have to do, I have to switch the variables between x and y, and then I try to find uh, y in terms of x. So what I mean here, so it means that if I go to this function, what I will do instead of f of x, I write y as I did before, then I switch x and y, then I try to find y in terms of x, okay? So what I will do is exactly as I explained. So first, I replace y with x, replace x with y, okay? So this becomes x equals to 1 plus 6 over x uh, y minus 3. But remember, this x that you see here is the same x in the domain. So x is greater than 3. Okay, but
But now I am supposed to find y in terms of x because it is common to have y as the dependent variable and x as the independent variable. Okay, so I move one to the other side. Then this means that y minus 3 is equal to 6 over x minus 1. Then I move 3 to the other side, so it becomes y equals to 3 plus 6 over x minus 1. Yes? So this means that the f inverse of x equals to 3 plus 6 over x minus 1. And of course, if I want to be explicit, the domain, as I found earlier, is x equals is x greater than 1. Okay, so I hope that this video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.